So today we're going to do a bit of dry stone walling. So the first thing you need to do before you start your dry stone walling is to have a look at the health and safety. Obviously steel toe cap boots because if anything drops on your boots you're not going to damage your feet. You need a good pair of gloves, something that's comfortable but you're quite happy using them and you can still feel the stones. The next big thing of course is safe lifting and handling and when you're handling stone we need to bend the knees, keep the back fairly upright, lead with your head and then use the power in your thigh muscles and when you're lifting up like that and then when you're putting down it's the same thing to place them down. A good stance is having your one foot that way north to south and east to west that way so that you've got all coverage and bend your legs a bit. It's kind of a martial arts stance really, but it, it works well. So if you get, if you go over backwards, you're on that foot. If you go that way, you're on that foot. So safe lifting and handling is very important. Don't lift anything more than about 25 kilos. Get some help before you attempt to move it. And obviously if, you, if you're moving over land, you're going to be using tractors and trailers and all sorts of things. So that's just a bit of health and safety. Then we'll have a look at the tools. Um, now you can actually dry stone wall pretty much without any tools if you uh, are really good and you really lay out your stone well you can actually hand pick your stone and you shouldn't have to do much cutting at all. However uh, if you do need to do some cutting then of course from a safety point of view you need your goggles and if you're cutting a piece of stone then you can use a you can score all around and use a bolster and chisel so you can put your goggles on and you can score it so say I've got a little bit to remove here and you can score around it okay mark it round and then when you want to increase the blows it will just knock off so you can actually cut off pieces if it's grit stone which this is a type of grit stone, a type of sandstone you can do that. If you need to remove little bits or to carve with stone you can switch to a comb chisel and what you can do with the comb if you've got little bits you can do sort of one two off, one two off, one two and so you can see that you can trim little bits off or if I want to do the same to the top one two one two one two don't do more than a couple because you can end up removing too much one two and just keep just literally keep repeating that you can shape your stone so that's the scutch chisel or the comb chisel we have a bolster we have the lump hammer and then we need a spirit level. The spirit level is for when you set up your um, your lines to make sure they're level and to make sure that your batter frame is level across the end. Um, so either a, uh, a larger spirit level or a boat level will do that job quite nicely. Okay, so that's the tools. So when you're building a dry stone wall, of course, you need some kind of batter frame. Now dry stone wallers traditionally use a bit of rebar, two pieces of rebar and then they have a, one of these pieces either side of the rebar with some little bolts and clamps to clamp it. And what they do is they knock the rebar into the ground and they'll have that at the width of the base and then they'll clamp the top at about 12 to 14 inches and they know where they're building to. On this particular one we've got a come in quite quickly we're only building a, a small wall today and so what I've done is to create a batter frame as you can see it's just using a couple of bits of old wood you need a brace and you need to know what your coping size is so what I've got here I want to end up at about two foot high so I can put that coping and it will fit on top so that's my coping stone on top so it needs to fit that so that's my batter frame set up now I can't knock it in the ground because it's hard ground so what I've done I've just positioned two 
of the starter stones and you can see they're quite big and for the ends what we call the cheek ends we've put a quite a large piece there which just needs pinning at the back to stop it rocking and another one that's just to give you an idea of the the base and what I've done I've put my batter frame up against them and a couple of bits of wood just to make sure it's firm at the moment that's the best I can do on this this situation and the same on the other side we're just gonna do a similar thing just squash that in there and then my batter is set up okay the next thing I've got to do is to make sure that this is level okay in here so this little piece here is level so we'll just get the string nice and tight on the sides push that back a little bit just to tighten that up same on there and then we'll just tighten up the other side and then we'll have a look at the different stone okay so now we've got our batter frame set up we've got the first couple of stones in the bottom and obviously you want your biggest stones in the bottom but now what we're going to do is have a look at how you sort out the stone because this is the key to proceeding quite quickly and making sure that you have enough stone so basically to do a meter so if I want to do a meter and that is a meter okay and uh, if we're doing a meter by a meter it'd be this high you would need for two faces a ton of stone per meter now this is a grit stone but you might be using limestone the next thing you need to know when you've got your stone delivered you need to sort out your pieces so for example here I'm doing a meter run I want to make sure that I've got enough copings or copers that I can do across the top so let's have a look at the copings first of all so the copings, because they're going on last, I want to make sure that I've got a meter. And I've got a meter there. And what I'm looking for is a stone, something a little bit like that. So when we come to do the top, which will be about here, that will go on and that will cover that gap. If it's too big, then it's going to stick out the sides. If it's too small, then there's going to be a gap either side of it so you need to make sure your copings are the right size some of mine actually are a little bit small but we sort them out and make sure we've got enough of them to start off with because if we get to the end of the job and we're putting them we run out it's going to look pretty bad so we put the copings furthest away just just before the copings I put some quite flattish pieces because often these are the bits that are going to finish off the top of the wall and just leveling up just before you put the copings on so I've put quite a few flats there I've put some facing bricks and this is another key point what you do is all your stone faces the wall so you can see it so when you're selecting the stone you can see which piece will be best for that part of the wall so if you have your facing stone facing the wall that's the best way obviously as you get nearer the wall you're going to have your bigger stone so you've got some quite uh, some bigger pieces here facing the front and obviously you need some what we call heartings which will fill the middle of the wall because obviously there's going to be gaps and you need to fill with pieces so you want lots of small pieces to fill in the middle so these are your heartings you want a few piles of that I'll probably have to get a few more uh, bits and pieces harting to fill it in the anatomy of the wall you have the foundation the foundational pieces if we're doing a foundation typically we dig out to twice the width of the wall and that's full of you know quite big stone usually and it will spread the weight the idea of a foundation spreads the weight so you've got your you put in your, your key pieces and what I'll need is a few little little bits of stone just to stop them rocking and we do what we call pinning on the back of them we pop a little bit of stone in to pin them on the back so we've got our foundation pieces we can also have our 
through pieces which go right across the wall, so at about knee height, we'll put some through stones that go right the way across the wall. Now, to find them, they need to be quite a long piece. Now, sometimes you're fortunate and you'll have pieces which will go right the way across the wall. This one won't quite. You can see it's going to go to about two thirds. So what you can do is what we call a two third through the wall and a one third there. Then on the next one, you can come two thirds and a third. So you either go a through stone that goes across the wall to do the whole distance or a two thirds and a third. Okay, so that's a through kind of stone. Okay, so we've got the foundational stones, we've got the throughs, we've got the facing, we've got the middle of heartings, and we've got the coping stones. So those are the key parts of the anatomy. So now what we need to do is to start putting a few pieces of stone down. I've got that level, so what I ideally want is pieces that are about that same height. So that piece might just tuck in there. Again, I'm looking at my line, looking at that. Now you want it to lock on to that piece, nice and firm. So that's okay. We can just put a little pinner on the back of the one before. So where that's rocking a little bit on there, we can kind of pin it in to stop that rocking. I've got one on there, it's a little bit lower. Might just have to put something in to bring it up to the same height. I've got one there, so I know I need to find a piece to go in there which will link those two together. That one. And then I will put this one in. Now, I am putting it lengthways, which normally, wherever you possibly can in dry stone walling, put them going in. If you do too much of this, it's called tracing. And if it was thinner than that, it wouldn't be a good thing for the wall, it would weaken the wall, but I've got that one going in, I've got that one going in. So I'm gonna put that one in there. Okay, so I've got my four, but you can see they're not quite up to the height of the, so I'm gonna to have to put a slightly thinner one to bring it up to the same height. We'll just get the lower side done. Okay, so I've got a couple of pieces similar to what I've done there. I've got some pieces here. So what we'll do is again, we'll bend the knees, Lift them up, and we'll just see if that will go into there. So that's gone into there, and then hopefully this one will go into here. I've got a bit of a problem in here, that there's a gap there. So, now normally what we don't want to do is have too many what we call soldiers, where they're up on end, because that might weaken the wall, because the stone generally is stronger in compression. But I'm gonna to have to put a soldier in. As long as we don't overdo it, it's okay. So I'm gonna put that soldier in there just to take that gap out. So you can see that that's just gonna bring me, take that nice, level that up a little bit now. And I've pretty much got my first course in there, just making sure they're locking onto each other, making sure they're nice and firm and they're not a little bit of a rock on that one. So again, what we'll do is we'll pin that just to pop a little thing on the back though, not on the front, to make sure they're pinned. So I've got my first course. Now what I do is to use my heartings to fill the middle piece. So don't chuck these in, place them. So what you're actually doing now, you're still building. So place them in nice and tight against your stone. So wedge them in, and a lot of people throw bits in, uh, any old how, and the trouble is it reduces the strength of the wall. So we're just gonna now build that up, and we're gonna just try and take it up so that it's level with the top of the wall. Nice and, nice and firm. So that's putting the heartings in and we'll, we'll take it right up to the, to the level, okay? So we've got our base nearly there. As you can see, it's a little bit low here, uh, but we filled the heartings in the middle of the wall. Uh, so we've just got a couple of little pieces here to do. 
to get it level. We'll keep it coarse, we'll keep it level as much as we can. So um, we've got to cut, there's a piece there that'll fit in there and we've got a couple of pieces. Just pop that one in there and all I'm going to do is bring it up level there, make sure they're nice and firm. A little bit more filling in the middle, fill up the gaps, okay, and then we're pretty much level then to go on and to do the next course. So what I need to do now is where I, I've got to bridge my gaps and I've also got to kind of come in because it's quite a steep camber on this. So I need a piece that's going to at least come to there and then another piece on there. On this one I'm going to need a piece that bridges over those three to tie it together. You don't want any vertical joints running up the wall. So I'll just have a look what we've got. Now I've got a piece here which uh, doesn't look too bad. I'm going to have to use it again that way on I think because uh, we'll just have a look at it, just try it a few different. It's got quite a nice angle on that side and that's bridging the gap so it's got an angle on it and I want the, I certainly want the cheek end. Now I've got to be a bit careful here. I'll just try that the other way up because it's not sitting quite right on its bedding plane. So let's just try it that way. That's a lot better. That's sitting flat now. It's fairly firm. Okay, it's got a little bit of an angle on it. It isn't quite 90 degrees there, which is a shame, but we're gonna have to live with that. And it's bridged the gap. It's got a little bit of a rock there. So we'll pin that just to take the rock out. And now we've got to find a piece to uh, go on that side. And we'll do the same here, then we'll move the line up. Okay, so on this one, uh, I want something about a similar thickness. And again, I want a, something fairly square on the ends. I'll try that the other way just to see if it sits any better. Actually sits a little bit better, but it's not a very good angle there. So that actually is bridging and it's sitting a lot better. I could, if I wanted to, just nibble a little piece off that just to make that work a little bit better. So I might just do that. So in order to do that, I'm gonna use, just pop the goggles on. Now, I could use either of these tools. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use this one just to, just to break that little piece off. Just gonna tap a little bit there, a little bit there, a little bit on the other side just to break that. Now where it doesn't break, if I want to, I can just scutch it off. And all I'm doing there, it's slightly cosmetic really, but I just wanted that to, when it goes on here, just to look a bit neater on that edge to be honest so I'm going to put that there it's coming back in it's bridged the gap sitting nicely now so that one can go there I now need to find another piece to drop into there and I also need a piece to go along there so I need a couple of decent pieces now pop that one in there like that just to bring that to the same height and then what we'll do is we'll move the line up now. The important thing is, is to keep a nice clean passageway. You normally need about two feet between the wall and the stone just so that you've got, you can walk freely, you can see what you've got. Um, so what we'll do, we'll try and level up this one a little bit. So I've got a piece here which will go in there Pull it back to the line, the line's been set up. I need to put some packers at the back of that one, certainly, just to get that all nice and firm. Get that nice and packed out so it's firm. And then we'll drop a piece to bridge the gap there. So that's nice, that's bridged that gap across there. And then I'll just need a piece 
to drop into the middle that piece will go in there oh, I mean, that way up actually it'll go a little bit better it's got a little piece sticking up on the back end which I'm going to trim off because that's going to be a problem for me if I don't trim that little piece off that's it that will make life a little bit easier for me later on and I want to have a piece sticking up in the back there just get that nice and binding on all the different layers that one would be better if the angle was the other way up actually let's just see if that will go I don't know if it will but that would give me a better angle to my wall I'll try and do that because it will just mean that that's gonna look better at the finish so I've got my one side there I just come around and have a look down the line just to make sure, just level that up a little bit. Okay, so that's keeping in line there. We've bridged our joints. There's a gap there, which we can either, we could have plugged, or we can have that as a habitat. And then I've just got to do the back. And then I'll pop that one in. So I'm using it into the wall, using the length of the stone, I'm trying to keep it about the same height. And then what we'll do is I'll bridge the gap on this one so we'll bridge that one drop that in there again keeping on the line and then we'll try and put a piece in just to finish that that will go in I have just trimmed it so just to see and it's just about binding on there binding on there so that's our second course and now we can go up for the third course. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to use this piece actually to bridge over that gap. So it's going to bridge that one, bridge that one, and bridge that one. There is a little bit of it. I'm going to have to put a piece underneath it there, but that's going to be nice and tight. What I've got there's a letterbox, and you don't want a letterbox, so I do need a piece in there to make sure that's nice and firm. But I have found a piece for the end, which normally I put that on first. And so I put that one in there. Just pull that one up nice and tight. Um, I'll put, I will put a piece in there, lift this up, put a piece in there just so it doesn't letterbox. So the letterbox is where it can pop out. And so, uh, as you can see, I need a piece to drop in there now, which is uh, the next piece I've got to find. We're just getting near the top. I'm just adjusting the height of the line. And you can see that that is about the finish. And we check the line there just having a look at the line and that's it the bubbles there in the middle and we'll just put the just try and, I've just got these flattish pieces now just to finish it off and hopefully they'll they'll span across there and uh, might just uh, rearrange that a little bit just so that it bridges the gaps make sure they're nice and firm and hopefully that one will just sit in there a little bit of adjustment I put like a, a covering stone there sometimes you can use that before the coping it's called a cover band keep the water out of the wall so now I'm nearly there just going to pull that back a little bit um, and we've leveled up this side filled up the middle with heartings you want a slight shallow dish if you can so the coping sit in there so make sure that the heartings are down correctly okay and what we'll do now is we'll put the copings on okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take away the batters so what we've done to set it up just to complete the wall put two copings on the end this will do a little bit bigger but uh, and then we're just going to fill in the middle of the wall so it wants to be a little bit lower in the center if you can just to make that uh, work correctly and what you're going to look for is they do sort of link in together uh, you can pin them a little bit as you go so a little bit of a triangular piece so just to hold it just while you 
getting all the other ones. This one's a bit of an awkward shape, but we'll put that one on top of there, which will sit on that one and marry that together quite nicely. So that one will go there. Keep them nice and vertical if you can. A couple more in here. And that one can go in there. And that one can fit in there, which pop that in. Just ease them out a little bit. Let's try and get that in. Just try and ease that in like that. Push it across a bit. Now I could have could do a bit of trimming if I wanted it to make it look really nice, but that's the coping on and you can kind of see here you get the anatomy of the wall you've got the try and make sure that you bridge over you cross your joints okay so we'll try to cross the joints that coping could do with one just coming a little bit further there to protect the wall just to make sure we don't get any rain in there um, so trying to avoid verticals trying to avoid where diagonal lines uh, make sure there's no letter boxes, make sure they're all nice and pinned in place. Um, we'll just have a look at the cheek ends, just the wall all done, coping's on. Uh, you can see the cheek end now and see the detail in the cheek end. You, I've got a batter so the wall is strong. You've got to make sure that if you're using your throughs that you've got a two-third to a one-third two third one third and you've got to make sure the cheek end is really strong because if that falls down you know there's going to be problems uh, make sure that everything's nice and firm and well pinned okay but that's basically uh, the steps in building a dry stone wall